I have loved this place since I was a kid and had a snake party there for my birthday. Where else can you climb in a spaceship, stroll among dinosaurs, see live bears and wolves, and maybe even have butterflies land on you? For families who live in or near the Triangle in North Carolina, the Museum of Life and Science in Durham is a must-visit attraction. The 84-acre museum and park offer a huge variety of experiences. You should know and expect that it's practically impossible to do and see everything in just one day. But that's great for folks in the area because it makes for exciting return visits. If you live a little farther out, it's well worth a day trip. We're playing some water. Visitors enter through the huge main building where they can find and interact with a wide range of science-based exhibits. Kids can watch a tornado form or spin planetary objects to see how weather moves across them. They can dance and play through interactive music-making video installations, peer into a biodome for ants, or spark curiosity about space travel with the impressive collection of artifacts from the early era of NASA. The museum acquired this collection with the help of some key donors and partners within the space program, including the late Michael Collins from the Apollo 11 mission to the moon. Visitors can get inside an orbiting module and see a full-size mock-up of a lunar lander. This display is one of the finest outside of the Smithsonian. Most of the rest of the museum is outdoor, with a few exceptions. The most notable indoor feature is the Magic Wings Butterfly House, a dazzling three-story greenhouse and tropical conservatory that opened in 1999. The Butterfly House is home to several hundred butterflies, representing dozens of species, as well as some 200 tropical plant varieties. To this day, it has been called one of the best butterfly houses in the nation. Young children particularly love the farmyard, a showcase of various livestock and farm animals that also offers hands-on experiences and learning opportunities led by the animal handlers. You may even get to meet an alpaca. The Into the Wild section of the park is one of the largest and is home to a few more exotic species, namely black bears, red wolves, ring-tailed lemurs, and radiated tortoises. The approach into this section is a beautiful 900-foot elevated boardwalk that descends to the central pond, which is itself an observatory for turtles and various waterfowl. The bears are a huge draw for visitors, although they don't tend to be very active or visible on hot summer days. The wolf enclosure is home to the highly endangered red wolf species, but the museum has had successes with birthing pups, with litters increasing the world's population by as much as a percentage or two. The lemurs are a crowd favorite, and their enclosure features a great playground for the animals when they're feeling frolicky. In 2018, it also became home for several radiated tortoises in a global conservation effort after 10,000 of the animals were found illegally housed in Madagascar. There are some amazing animals here, but you can't ignore the play areas for kids. Hideaway Woods is an impressive network of tree houses and play spaces that even includes a flowing stream bed. The Dinosaur Trail is a revamped version of the one created in the 1960s when the museum lived on the other side of the street. The trail features surprisingly lifelike full-size models of several species and is incredibly popular with the kids. Ours also love digging for fossils in the dig area, which allows kids to find shark's teeth and other fossils brought up from an abandoned mine in eastern North Carolina that used to be below the ocean. We also love taking the kids to Into the Wind, a collection of seven outdoor installations that explore wind power and movement. Our kids really love the Seed Drop, a giant arm that demonstrates how various natural designs help seeds catch air and then spread. The sailboats are also fun, although you do need a decent breeze to get them going. In the hot summer months, make sure to bring a bathing suit for the little ones. They'll have a blast playing in the various water features in the Earth Moves section. 
This was a brilliant idea for the museum, and it gives kids a great chance to cool off and learn about how water moves. The miniature train is almost identical to the one at Pullen Park, if you want to check out that video. It's a similar model CP Huntington train, but the route isn't quite as long and not quite as scenic because you're traveling pretty much through the woods. There are some fun features along the way, though. The Sprout Cafe is really the only option for dining at the museum. The Thai chicken wrap is pretty good if you're looking for something other than burgers. There are also areas to picnic in the park if you'd rather go that route. Some things to know before you go. Admission is not cheap, especially if you have multiple adults and children. If this is a resource you see yourself using a lot, as we do, a museum membership might be a good idea. This place is large, and if you want to see it all, you'll need to do a lot of walking. The park is very access friendly for those with disabilities, and the paths are all wide and paved in almost all of the park. Strollers are highly recommended, especially when small children give out on walking. You can easily spend hours or a whole day there, so plan accordingly. If you do go, you'll have a great time, and the kids will be entertained. You will too. If you like this video or you like the Museum of Life and Science, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more places to take kids in North Carolina. See you next time.